Hi everybody. My first uh, lecture is about the history of periodontology. I'd like to speak about uh, a history in some of details, uh, starting from the beginning. Uh, uh, how humans uh, understood the periodontium and uh, its diseases and how they dealt with it I'll try to explain it in this lecture human suffering human suffering has been increasing from age and medical technology also has increasing accordingly human suffering may be in the form of debilitating diseases which have medical cure and also those which do not have any cure. The science and technology is being constantly upgraded according to the requirement. In ancient ages, in ancient ages, human suffering due to disease has very limited cure. The curiosity of doctors toward research inventions of new medicines and awareness of the general public has improved the medical research science and technology in many faults. Ancient history also reveals many types of cure for diseases but were in a very crude form. In this topic we are going to discuss about the history of diseases and cure related to the gums and periodontium, which was available in the ancient ages. Gingival and periodontal diseases affected early humans in diverse cultures as ancient Egypt and early pre-Columbian America. The earliest historical records dealing with awareness of periodontal disease have been preserved as sections or chapters. The relationship of calculus periodontal disease was considered in these sections. Now let's talk about the early civilization. The Sumerians of 3000 BC used to practice oral hygiene with decorated gold toothpicks, something like that, decorated toothpicks, or clay tablets and various herbal medicines for their periodontal problems. Toothpicks were found in these excavations in Mesopotamia also. The ancient Egyptian bodies revealed lots of periodontal diseases. The Ebers Papyrus, the Ebers Papyrus, ancient medical books from the uh, Egyptian, contains many references to gingival diseases and a number of prescriptions for strengthening the teeth and gum. These prescriptions contain remedies made from various plants and minerals which were applied on the gum in the form of paste with honey, vegetable gum or residue of beer as vehicle. In terms of modern medical practice, the surgical papyrus, the surgical papyrus, by Edwin Smith, Edwin Smith, Surgical Papyrus by Edwin Smith, this is Edwin Smith, the scientist, presents with 48 cases, 48 cases of discussions about diagnosis, prognosis, and appropriate therapy. Diagnosis, prognosis, and appropriate therapy. This is what included in the Edwin Smith surgical papyrus. It includes 48 cases. According to him, the periodontal diseases 
they didn't require surgical therapy and uh, now they this is a wrong opinion but uh, these days uh, the Edwin Smith thought that the, the surgical treatment the surgical phase of treatment is not required for periodontal treatment In Suruta Samitha, numerous descriptions, this is Suruta Samitha, an Indian scientist, numerous descriptions about severe periodontal disease with loose teeth and purulent discharge with gingiva has been given. So in Suruta Samitha, these are given numerous description about severe periodontal disease with loose teeth and purulent gingiva this is what described in Suruta Samita yes in this book of the Indian scientist. In Charaka Samitha, which is named father of medicine, toothbrushing and oral hygiene were given importance. So the importance of Charaka is toothbrushing toothbrushing and oral hygiene were given importance in Charak. It said that the stick used for brushing teeth should either astringent or pungent or bitter and should be chewed twice a day in such a way that your gums are not injured. So he thought the Charaka so, thought that uh, this things that should be used for brushing teeth should be astringent or pungent or bitter and should be chewed twice daily. Twice daily in such a way that it will not hurt the gum. In 2005 BC, ancient Chinese doctor called Huang Tai, Huang Tai, this is Huang Tai, wrote a chapter about dental and gingival diseases in his medical work. He divided oral diseases into three types. First, fungia, fungia, which means inflammatory condition, inflammatory, inflammatory conditions. Second, 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 yakon, which means disease of soft tissue
invest in the teeth. Third, third, Chongya, Chongya, that say dental caries. So he described the oral diseases and divided them to three types which are fungia inflammatory condition yakon the disease of soft investing tissue and chongya which is the dental caries gingival inflammations periodontal abscesses and gingival ulcerations are described in accurate detail also the gingiva has been described as pale or violet red hard and lumpy sometimes bleeding tissue and herbals used for treating these bleeding and remedies are also explained in detail the importance of oral hygiene was recognized by the early Hebrews early Hebrews al -Ibriyun. the Chinese were the earliest people the Chinese were the earliest people who used the chew stick as a toothpick chew sticks as a tooth toothpicks <clears throat> and to the brush to clean the teeth and massage the gingival tissue so they used the early Chinese was the first one who used the chew sticks as a toothpick and a toothbrush for brushing the teeth and massaging the gingiva for two purpose brushing the teeth and massaging the gingiva So, they, they used this for these two purposes. Artifacts of Phoenician civilization, al Phoenician, include a specimen of wire splinting, a specimen of wire splinting constructed to stabilize the loosened teeth by periodontal diseases so what remained from the Phoenicians uh, civilization includes these splinting wires which are used for the treatment of loosened teeth in periodontia let us talk about the Greece Elionanion. Modern science had its birth in Greece and medicine developed in terms of diagnostic approach and technical skill. Greek medicine continued into the Roman civilization and early Byzantine age. Among the ancient Greek Hippocrates was the first to institute a systematic examination of patient's pulse, temperature, respiration, exc excrete, and sputum. The Hippocrates. He discussed, he discussed that inflammation of gums could be caused by accumulation of pituita. Inflammation. of gums could be caused by 
fits with a which means calculus calculus this is the thought of Hippocrates regarding the inflammation of gum and he was called also as a father, one of the fathers of medicine in the Greece Hippocrates in the Rome long before 735 BC the Etruscans the Etruscans have adopted the art of construction of artificial dentures in the Rome they adopted the use of artificial dentures but had no awareness of the periodontal diseases they had no awareness of periodontal diseases in 25 BC to 15 B AD Aulus Cornelius Silicus Aulus Cornelius Silicus this man Aulus Cornelius Silicus refers the disease affecting the mouth and their treatment as follows He thought that if gum separate from the teeth it is beneficial to chew and repairs and apples and keep their juice in the mouth so he thought that for the treatment of the separating gum from the teeth it is preferable to eat and rip sorry and rip pears and apples and keep their juice their juice in mouth he thought that this will help in treating this condition he described that the looseness of teeth is caused by weakness of their roots or by flaccidity of the gums. He believes that stains on teeth should be removed and teeth should be rubbed with the dentifrice. The use of toothbrush and gingival massage was mentioned by Roman poets in their writing. When we come to the Middle Age, the astonishing attainments of Islamic medicine provided from the rise of European medicine in the late Middle Age and Renaissance. Abu al-Qasim Abu al-Qasim derived a lot of information from Greek medical treaties and modified and added them in the surgical specialties. During 809 to 873 Dr. Hunayyan ibn Ishaq Dr. Hunayyan ibn Ishaq this man a physician in a chief Baghdad hospital translated the original Greek text of Galon into Arabic So he translated the book of Galon to Arabic. To Arabic. He translated the Galon medical textbook to Arabic. During nine 180 to 1037 Ibn Sina Ibn Sina which we know about it about him 
use an extensive materia medica for oral periodontal diseases and rarely restored restore to surgery. Abu Qasim Abu Qasim described the process to remove the calculus from the teeth as follow. He said that occasionally there is a deposited in the inner and outer surface of the teeth or between the gum large and rough ugly concretion as we know he described the calculus the teeth taken on a black yellow or green color following which the gums are altered and the teeth become unsightly he said that from the deposition of the gum uh, of the gum uh, and the teeth by calculus deposition which is a yellow black color or green color he said that this this will give us unbeautiful and beautiful and beautiful sight to treat this disease from the opinion of the Abul Qasim he said that you should seat the patient in front of you seat patient in front in front of you then place place the head place the head of patient of the patient between or in your lap then scale the teeth that present the concretion or the gritty deposit until nothing remains mm -hmm. then after that you should scale do scaling Scri scrape or scaling also throughout where the teeth are black yellow green or otherwise colored until they uh, that say the deposits all the deposits are gone it's possible that one scaling will su suffice if not he 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 said that a one scaling may be sufficient but if not begin a second third or fourth time until your purpose is completely attained and this is an astonishing idea about removing the calculus and deposits nowadays also you shouldn't you shouldn't left leave sorry you shouldn't leave any deposits on the tooth surface while you are working for the removal of calculus on the tooth surfaces you should know that the scaling of teeth is done with instruments of various shape according to the use that's required for them the scalers that when used for scaling the inner surface of the teeth are different than those employed for the scaling of exterior surface and those that are used to scale the interdental surfaces. Here's an assortment of scalers, all of which you have at your home disposition. As you see here. I'll put Uh, a picture for you these are a chisel scaler chisel scaler
for example this is a chisel scaler and many other scalers are used according to its purpose either exteriorly or interiorly or between the teeth in Japan 984 a book by Yasuri Tanba Yasuri Tanba Yasuri Tanba this book entitled a one Shinpo consisted of 30 volumes in volume 5 the treatment of disease of mouth teeth throat and nose was described so he entitled he wrote a book Shinpo book Shinpo book he wrote a book by named Shinpo by Yasuri Tanba consisted of 30 volumes and in the volume 5 he described the treatment of disease of mouth, teeth, throat and nose etc. He wrote that the teeth received the nutrition from the bone marrow and tooth mobility is caused by malnutrition. So he thought this Yasuri Tanbas thought that the teeth nutrition is from bone marrow and the di diseases of tooth mobility is caused by malnutrition This is how he thought. Let's come to the Renaissance age. During 1520 to 1574, Bartholomeus Eustatius, an anatomist, this scientist, which was an anatomist, wrote a small book he is anatomist he wrote a small book on density called libellus didentibus in 30 chapters his achievement in dentistry is a book named Labelus the dentibus from th consisted of thirty chapters. <coughs> In one thousand. 1509 to 1590 Ambrose Perry Ambrose Perry this scientist Ambrose Perry developed many oral surgical procedure in detail including gingivectomy of hyperplastic gingival tissue this is new from now gingivectomy and he uh, talked about the etiology and significance of calculus and had a set of scalar to remove these hard deposits so this is what 
done by the sign this scientist Ambrose Ambrose Perry He developed the surgical procedure like gingivectomy for example in 1567 76 sorry a Girloma Girlomo Cardano Girlomo Cardano was the first the scientist was the first to differentiate types of periodontal diseases differentiate types of periodontal diseases He was the first to differentiate different types of periodontal diseases, where one type of disease that occur with advancing age and lead to a progressive loosening and loss of teeth. A second very aggressive type that occur in young patients. This remind me from for the chronic periodontitis and aggressive periodontitis. So the, the history of differentiating these two types of diseases who is referred to the Girolamo Cardano, this scientist from 1501 to 1576. This classification was discovered, rediscovered, let's say rediscovered, in the 20th century and is widely accepted. And it's widely accepted so this scientist um, made the idea of uh, classification of periodontal diseases and he classified it to two types two main type one with progressing the age and the second one which is the most aggressive one is in young patient as we uh, named nowadays by aggressive periodontitis. We have in the history of Renaissance also we 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 must mention the scientist Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. Anthony van Leeuwenhoek, the scientist who was first described the oral bacterial flora first described the oral flora that say oral spirochetes and bacillus is first described the oral flora Antony van Leeuwenhoek let's come to the 18th century after the Renaissance we have 18th century modern dentistry developed in 18th century Pari Fauchhart, this doctor, Dr. Pari Fauchhart, is regarded as the father of modern dentistry. Pari Fauchhart is the father of modern dentistry. He significantly improved the instrument and technical skills required for dental treatment. His book, The Surgeon Dentist, was published in 1728. 
his book which is named Surgeon Dentist was published in 1728 this book transformed the entire dental practice and also served to educate the succeeding generation of dentists all aspects of dental practice are presented in this book he wrote that Confection and sweets destroy the teeth by sticking to the surface and producing the acids. He described in detail the periodontal instruments and scaling techniques. So, this is the father of modern dentistry, Dr. Puri Fauchart. During 1728 to 1793, John Hunter, John Hunter, this is John Hunter, John Hunter, from, he born in 1728. Uh, and died in 1793 uh, he wrote a book he wrote a book called the natural history of the human teeth <coughs> natural history of human teeth Illustrating the anatomy of the teeth and their supporting structures, <coughs> he described the features of periodontal disease, the concept of active and passive eruption, <coughs> let's go to the 19th century, during the 1785 1785 to 1850 there was a scientist named Leonard Koike this is Leonard Koike he described the inflammatory chains of gingival and the presence of calculus on the teeth leading to the loosens and exfoliation of the teeth he mentioned he mentioned the need for oral hygiene and recommended using astringent powder and a toothbrush placing the bristles into the spaces between the teeth but he discouraged the splinting he didn't he didn't advise to splint the teeth. This was his opinion. In mid 19th century, John W. Rigg, this is John Riggs, was the first individual to limit his practice to periodontics and hence considered to be the first specialist in this field. He is this man, he is the first, first specialist in periodontics. He specialized in periodontology. He described the treatment of periodontal diseases, strongly advocated cleanliness, cleanliness 
of mouth and strongly opposed surgery that say resection of gums this was his opinion in the middle of the 19th century in late 19th century Rudolf Virchow this is Rudolf Virchow the scientist described the microscopic change occurring in the inflammation this resulted in understanding the pathogenesis of periodontal diseases so he was responsible for determining the pathogenesis of periodontal diseases During 1,847 <clears throat> 1, to 1,906 A scientist named Adolf Witzel. He was the first individual he was the first individual to identify bacteria as a cause of periodontal disease. He was the first individual who identified bacteria as a cause of periodontal disease. This scientist Adolf Witzel. Adolf Witzel. We have the scientist, other scientist, which is named Miller. In his classic book, The Microorganism of Human Mouth, which was published in 1890, described the feature of periodontal diseases and considered the role of redisposing factors and irritational factors also bacterial etiology in the pyroia or the fever of alveolaris he believed that the periodontal disease was caused by various bacteria which are normally in the oral cavity so he referred the oral disease, the periodontal disease, to the bacteria is found normally in the oral cavity. <clears throat> During 1062 to 1000, 1862 to 1950, Vincent scientist described the spiralum crotic gingivitis which is later known as Vincentis angina uh, which is later named as Vincentis angina <clears throat> this scientist Solomon Robiskis developed a surgical technique consisting of gingivectomy excision exposing the marginal bore, bone for subsequent curettage and remodeling this scientist invented the techniques consisting of gingivectomy and reaching the marginal bone for, subsequ for subsequent curettage and remodeling which we do it nowadays by open flap when we see this slide we find the 20th century scientists. These are the scientists of 20th century. In the first quarter of 20th century, periodontics flourished mainly in Vienna and Berlin, in the Central Europe. In the Vienna during 1000, 
Published extensive microscopic studies of periodontal diseases. Performed on human autopsy specimens. He described the attachment of gingival epithelium to the tooth and the histopathology of inflammatory and degenerative periodontal disease. The biology of cementum, active and passive tooth eruption and traumatic occlusion. The Dental Cosmos was the journal of the American Dental Association published in 1927. In Berlin, the, the group found in Berlin consisted of scientists to refine the surgical approach to periodontal therapy. During 1879 to 1952, Whiskey, this is the scientist, Whiskey scientist, Oscar Whiskey, carried out studies correlating radiographic and histopathologic changes in the periodontal diseases. He also conceptualized the periodontium as formed by cementum, gingiva, periodontal ligament, and bone, and named it as paradentium, which is nowadays changed to periodontium. A term, this term, but this term, paradentium, is still present in the Europe. During 1882 to 1958, Robert Newman, Robert Newman, this is Robert Newman, this scientist, Robert Newman, described the principle of periodontal surgery including osseous recontouring. And in the United States, in the United States and other countries, periodontal surgery developed in the first decade of the century, with contribution by A. Zentler, J. Zemsky, Black Oak Rickland, Orban, Kaplan, and A. B. Crane, and many other scientists. And Clickman, many of them are developed the periodontal surgery. Early in 20th century, surgical techniques were developed for coverage of denuded roots. Isadore Hirschfeld wrote papers on oral hygiene and local factors. After the Second World War, the United States and Scandinavia took a leading role in basic and clinical periodontal research. From the mid of 90 and onward with the major advances in the field of pathology, microbiology and immunology. After that, animal models of periodontal disease were developed and the role of local systemic factor were studied. Irwin Klickman, this is Klickman, this man, was a leading researcher in this period. The gingival pocket published in 1952 opened a new era in understanding the biology of periodontium. At present, the role microorganisms and immunologic response are the center of attention of many research groups. Several workshops and international conferences 
have summarized the existing knowledge on the biologic and clinical aspect of periodontology. The Journal of Periodontology founded by two women periodontists. These two ladies, Gillette Hayden and Grace Roger. This is Grace Roger. Grace Roger Spalding and Gillette Hayden in 1940. So periodontal education in United States has has also grown in the second half half of 20th century and most dental schools have separate and independent units for teaching and researching regarding periodontal disease. Periodontics was recognized as a specialty of dentistry by the American Dental Association ADA in 1974 47 so the field of periodontology periodontics is recognized by ADA as one of the speciality in one thousand nine hundred forty seven. And this is somewhat in detail the history of periodontology from its beginning till now. Thanks for your listening.